Hello. Today I'm going to show you my new flight simulator, my version 3.0. Been working on this for a while. This is different from my previous flight simulators in that this is a permanent install. Before I had to set it up, tear it down, set it up and tear it down, and that gets old really quick. Oftentimes I would not sit down to fly because I didn't want to go through the, the hassle of setting something up and then having to tear it down. This all started with building this desk. Um, it's based off of this desk, which I also built, but I built it it's much smaller. It tucks in the corner really nicely. You can see it's kind of tight. Um, the by looking at the size of the the pedals, the rudder pedals in the PC, so that PC box is actually kind of small. So it's it's definitely tight. Um, I'm moving a little bit closer, and we will kind of go through the gear. So the first piece of uh, equipment is the monitor. And to me, the monitor for this one is actually the weak part of my setup. But um, I picked it because it was affordable and it's large. This is a 43-inch uh, LG 4K TV. It was on sale at Best Buy. It was like 250 or something like that. I can't afford a giant actual computer monitor. Those things are crazy expensive. Um, but the reason I went with this over a smaller computer monitor is because I wanted to better recreate the site picture. And so I felt like the, the, the larger size was, was better for that. So kind of moving down, uh, we'll kind of go from left to right. That is just an iPad running for flight. Um, it is connected to the flight simulator using a small app. Um, I'll put the, the name of the app in the description. Um, it works really well. It definitely makes landing at airports much more easier with the taxiway information and, and, and everything. What it doesn't do though is it doesn't sync up with whatever you enter into the flight sim. So it's, it's independent, uh, but it's still, it's still very functional. This is a WiMAX at touchscreen. It's a 15 point, either 4 or 0.6, I can't remember, inch touchscreen. Um, I bought it from uh, Flight Velocity, which was a package deal, which I don't think they have in stock right now, but they do have this panel. And this panel attaches to the top of the uh, Honeycomb uh, Alpha yoke. And what's nice about it is it's made to to connect or to mount the uh, Sim Innovations Knobster. And the way this works is when they're connected using Air Manager, what you can do is you can touch on a parameter, like say for my bar barometer, and I can adjust it like that. It's got a small inner knob, an outer knob, and then a push knob. I can come down here, change my heading bug. Um, you know, that's, that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, this panel, I think, is about $50. It's well worth it. It's, it's sturdy, but it's not overly heavy to make your setup unstable. Um, coming down here, this is the Honeycomb um, Alpha and Bravo yoke and throttle quadrant. Um, pretty popular gear right now. Um, I don't think it needs a whole lot of explanation, except to say that I really do uh, like these two pieces of gear. The only thing that I don't like about them is and of course at this price point, I cannot complain, is that these buttons are not backlit. And so um, what I'm doing is I'm using, uh, this is like a music stand light that would clamp on to a music stand to read sheet music. Um, and I have it clamped onto the desk and I have one for the Alpha and one for the Bravo and it just makes it easier to see. And I'll demonstrate that in just a bit. So working my way up, uh, from the from the Bravo, this is just standard Logitech panels. I have a uh, radio panel, a multi-panel, and a FIPS panel. Um, and then on top of this are some mounts. If I wanted to add another iPad, I could. And actually, when I'm sitting here, an iPad right here is not in my field of vision, so that's okay. Um, this is just a computer monitor, audio monitor uh, for for sound. It just they sound really good. I'll, again, I'll put the links for that. These are kind of pricey though, because these are actually uh, studio quality. I have a small project studio and I just happen to have those. So I think they're overkill for this. Uh, be better off with just regular, uh, you know, computer speakers instead of these. Um, this is my mouse and keyboard. I picked this specifically because two reasons. One, it's backlit. 
if you put your hand over it, it will light up. And, uh, and when I do my night flights, I like to turn the light out so it makes it more immersive. And this makes it easier to see. What I also like about this setup, this is Logitech MX keys and mouse, is that I can press one of these buttons and I can use it to control my other computer and I only have to have one set, one keyboard. And that's, that's nice, because I really do like this keyboard. Um, my rudder pedal, this is the Thrustmaster pendulum style rudder, rudder pedal. Um, I am a student pilot and I felt like the skate style, I don't know what else you would call them, um, was just not any fun at all. And I was able to get my hands on this at the actual normal price and not a, you know, not an inflated price. And I've got to say, it made I, of all the gear that I have, this is the piece that is the most uh, accurate, I would have to say, um, in terms of between this and um, actual flight. So that's my, my setup. Um, what also, I'll show you what it looks like with the light out. So you can see it's pretty cool. Um, and again, if I wave my hand, it has a proximity sensor that will light up and which makes it just much easier to see. Um, another cool feature of this desk, let me turn the light back on, is when I am done, I can move my keyboard back to the other, my other desk, same for the mouse. And then when I shut this down, that actually folds out of the way and makes it much easier to move around in this room. It's, it's very small in here. So anyway, I will put uh, links to some of the gear. If you have any questions or comments, post below. Um, thanks for sticking around.